River. Operation Shuja is uh, progressing really well. We are now in phase two. Phase one, which was started on uh, 30th of November 2021, was mainly neutralizing the non enemy positions then, including uh, Kambi Yayua, Belu 1, Belu 2, Tandoli, uh, Zunguruka. That was mainly by air and uh, artillery strikes. In phase two, uh, which we started in uh, February, exactly February 8th, uh, 2022. So now our ground forces dominating those areas and uh, conducting mainly mobile operations to, de to, to degrade the enemy capabilities especially to make trouble uh, to the civilian populations. They have been very successful in doing that and we have so far seen uh, many uh, ADF uh, elements uh, put out of action. We have seen uh, formerly internally displaced people return to their homes. We also conducted infrastructure improvement activities mainly on roads in the area that we are operating in uh, we did a security roads uh, nobili mukakati semuliki up to beni we improved those roads we have also been able to improve uh, or to make a, a, another line of communication uh, on, 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 the, on the Lake Albert uh, from uh, uh, Burasi, which is in Iruwebisengo, in Toroko district, linking up to Boga. A distance of about 50 kilometers, which was able to reduce a lot of distance uh, in terms of uh, lines of communication, because now at least we can also use water. You said this is supposed to be in phases. Mm. What was in phase one, what's in phase two, and what lies ahead? Now we are, we are looking at uh, phase three. Phase three uh, is what we are looking at now mainly. One is to make sure that we secure uh, big infrastructure projects that uh, the government of Uganda and the government of DRC are implementing. But particularly as per the mandate of the operation and the, as per the memorandum of understanding is securing the, the rehabilitation of the Kasindi Butembo Beni Road and the Bunagana Rushuru Goma Road. That one we, we, we have already started even the deployments. Then we also want to make sure that we completely deny the enemy freedom of action to abduct, to train, uh, to even continue uh, co co collaboration and coordination networks with other foreign terrorist groups like Al Shabaab, like Al Qaeda, Islamic State. We want to use all our capabilities to deny them that. But also, we're now focusing at uh, level road activities, return of the IDPs, and also we're doing now support uh, in terms of medical uh, camps in terms of other civil military activities like improvement of uh, areas where these people are formerly were in terms of like the roads I'm talking about. Uh, our main focus in phase three now is uh, to also make sure that we step up the, the, the capabilities of other forces that can help. For instance, zonal forces, because we're looking at zonal forces aspect uh, with the FRDC because as we have mobile forces conducting full-scale operations against the, the terrorists, we also need to have zone of forces that can help now in protection of the population. So some of these will also be uh, some of the activities that we shall be doing. Two days ago, uh, the Chief of Defense Forces 
uh, of UPDF, General Wilson Imbadi, uh, held a high-level meeting with the Chief of General Staff of the FRDC, General Celestine uh, Monsese in uh, Ituri, uh, in Ituri province, particularly in Bunia. And these are some of the things they were looking at. Uh, they were also following up on the status of forces agreement that was signed here in Kampala on, uh, uh, on, on, on 30th of January 2021. That status of forces agreement was signed between the, the government of Uganda, represented by Minister of Defence of Uganda, Honorable Vincent Sempija, and the Minister of Defence of uh, DRC, uh, Honorable Gilbert Kabanda. So the chiefs were now there to assess so far how is it being implemented? And all these aspects are, are, are coming uh, to, to, to play to see so far how are our forces faring in terms of jointness, in terms of discipline, in terms of support to other activities, civil activities, uh, all, all that has come to, to the fore. Now, the main operation is being, uh, of course, conducted by the military. It's a military operation and uh, it's a joint operation. UPDF and the FRDC. The working relationship is superb and uh, we are really happy about that and it has helped us a lot uh, because first and foremost that is what it is supposed to be as per the memorandum of understanding that was signed between uh, government of Uganda and government of, of Congo, uh, government of DRC at the start of the operation also, as per the general agreement on defense cooperation, it is a joint operation and it is working very, very well. The operation commanders are two. UPDF operation commander is Major General Kayanja Mohanga. FRDC operation commander is Major General Abombele. Now, they are working very well. The police elements are also very important because now they help, for instance, in the investigation of crimes. Uh, in the course of the operation, there are some people who can be found and uh, they, they, they are not exactly the rebels we, we could be talking about or the terrorists, but there could be other crimes in the areas of operation. So the police uh, are, are happy to come in and, and, and support us in that. However, as we speak now, the operation is military heavy and the police elements are not really, really, really... Uh, part of the operation, but they really support in those aspects of yeah, other criminalities that may be there. Some people are put out of action to use the military term or killed and others could surrender. Which, what about the casualties on either side, either PDF or the enemy forces or the, the local population? And then do you have a situation where some ADF are surrendering to either side? Yes, uh, of, of course at the start of the operation, like I told you, very many elements of uh, ADF were eliminated uh, through our air and air strikes in hundreds. Of course, we did not do a body count of one, two, three, four, but we, uh, from the intelligence and information we got, very many were eliminated, either as killed or injured. Some have been surrendering. Uh, fortunately, we have already uh, standing operating procedures uh, which we have set uh, in place uh, as part of the operation uh, between uh, you know, for all forces involved in the operation and these are being worked on very well. Any people who come to surrender, uh, they are uh, processed through uh, the normal amnesty uh, process. But all of those so far that have surrendered have been uh, Congolese. We cannot bring them to Uganda, of course. Uh, the Congolese that have surrendered are many. Uh, we have been told they are over, over, over 80 or, or almost up to 100. And uh, the government of Congo, uh, through the amnesty process, are, are handling those to make sure that they resettle them and take them back to the community. About now the civilians. Civilians have uh, also been affected in terms of displacement, in terms of uh, attacks by the by, by the by the F, uh, by the ADF, in terms of others even being killed and injured. Now this is what we are trying to reverse completely.
uh, to make sure that we reduce or completely degrade the capability of the ADF to cause mayhem among the civilian populations.